Hello, my name is Trevor from SkySiv. In this video, we will be talking about the concept of one-way and two-way area loads, how their pressure is distributed, and what that means in practice. And in the latter part of this video, we will be taking our example through SkySiv Structural 3D. In practice, one-way and two-way area loads actually refer to one-way or two-way slabs, but the pressure distribution method can actually be used in any direction, not just against the slab or vertically. The term one and two from the, from the words one and two-way area loads actually indicate the number of perpendicular directions a load may travel to get to a support. For example, a one-way slab is supported on two sides and the load can only be traveling in one direction. Conversely, for a two-way slab, it is supported on all four sides and the load can travel in both perpendicular directions. So now let's take a look at our example framing layout and see how the pressure distribution is gonna shake out. So for both the one-way and two-way cases, we have the exact same slab layout or framing layout here. We have a 30 feet by 30 feet bay with three vertical beams and two horizontal girders. And again, it's the same for the one-way and two-way case. Our load is 100 PSF, and we'll actually use this uh, when we take our, our example into structural 3D. So first, let's take a look at our one-way load, or one-way area, yeah, one-way slab. So the first thing you wanna do is figure out what way the slab is spanning or what way the actual one way or distribution is going to be. So for example, in this case, you would expect a slab to span this direction. More often than not, and actually probably about 99% of the time, the slab is going to go perpendicular to the beams and parallel to the girders because we want the slab to span as little distance as possible. More often than not, you're going to see the slab spanning this way because in this direction, even though our spacing is not very realistic here, this span is only 15 between this beam and this beam. Versus if we wanted to put this, the slab going this direction, it would have to span 30 feet. So from that, we can identify that, okay, our slab is spanning this way, and as a one-way slab, one-way area load, this is the direction that the load can travel. So if we, if you've probably seen this before, if we want to put in a slab span symbol, this is how you'd see on the drawings. This is indicating what the span direction is. So for a two-way load, it's obviously gonna be different, but um, for our one-way slab, we're, we're saying that the load can only travel in this single direction. So if any load hits here, it's, if any load is on top of the slab here, it's either gonna go this way or this way. And that's actually gonna play into the distribution. But now that we identified the direction that we wanna put the slab in, or that we want the one-way slab to span in, let's talk about the tributary width. So a simple way to do that is, if it's not intuitive already, is just pick a point anywhere on the slab, like right there, and now using the directions we have, go to the closest member. So we can see that's gonna actually go to this member. We have a load over here, it's closer to here. It's gonna go this way. We have a load that's kind of in the middle, it's gonna go to this middle beam, middle beam. So you can start to draw out and see, okay, well obviously, halfway between is going to be our tributary width distance. Because if we go halfway between the beams on each side, they're gonna to go to their respective side of the beam, whatever's closest. So for this example, this beam here is taking seven and a half feet of tributary width of this side and seven and a half feet of width on this side. So this is actually 15 feet and then these last two corner beams are taking seven and a half feet of tributary width for the one-way slab. Okay, so we wrapped up that part. Let's move on to the two-way slab and figure out how the distribution shakes out. So the first thing you wanna do for the two-way slab is identify the slab direction or the span direction. It's really easy for us because since it's supported on all four sides here, we're saying that there is no need to, to figure out what the slab direction is. In the one-way case, flip this way. In the one-way case, we said that it's supported on this end and this end, so that it's only traveling between these two, this direction of the supports. But for the two-way, it's traveling in all directions. So we can do a system or a something like this. So now we have, it's spanning in both directions. So if we wanted to fast forward, if we pick a load, it can go this way or pick a point where the load's gonna drop you know, pick a point over here. Now, instead of going in this direction, it can actually go to the girder. In this case, we're seeing distributed loads on these three beams, and then those three beams are carrying the reactions to the girders. 
But in this case, we're going to have distributed loads on all the members because it's going to the load is going to go to the closest member wherever you're you're located on the slab. So if you wanted to, you know, do this multiple times, you'd understand that basically you can draw a 45 degree angle here from the corners of the beams and where they meet is the kind of the breakpoint for that. We can do this on both sides. Just approximating here. And this makes sense because as we go out 45 degrees, it's going to either go to this member or this member because it can go in either this or that direction. And then from here, it's very simple. It's just going to connect this way. So once you get a certain distance away from the girder, it's actually just the same as a one-way area load. So really the only difference is this area here that's going to be applied to the actual girder itself. So in this case, the girder is going to see the reactions from the beams and the distributed load. And in this other case, we're going to, it's just going to see the reactions. And so after we're done drawing it, now we're having our tributary area of the beams, just like we have the tributary area on this side as well. So again, difference here is the triangles that are loading the girders up. And that's actually going to wrap up our whiteboard portion of this video. We're going to go into the structural 3D portion next and actually see how the load shaked out uh, using structural 3D. Uh, just as a note, in practice, most of the time, one-way slabs are going to be uh, more than enough to suffice. This is uh, most common in composite slab design or steel decking uh, because obviously steel decking can only travel in one direction. And then the two-way slab or two-way area loading is going to be more common with reinforced concrete structures with beams supporting them uh, because it's going to be supported on all four sides. So composite structures, entirely reinforced concrete structures. Let's get into structure 3D and take a look at our loads. Okay, now we've replicated our frame set up here in structure 3D. Let's take a look at how the loads are uh, distributed. So on the left, we have our one-way load. On the right, we have our two-way load. Again, same dimensions. They're both 30 feet by 30 feet. I drew the girders as red and the beam members as gray or black here. So what we'll do is we'll throw it in the isometric version and we'll turn on loads. So we can see that both loads are 0.1 KSF downward or 100 PSF. Now using the SkySiv equivalent area load function we can see how these loads are going to distribute. So again one of them is one way one of them, and one of them is two way. So we can see, and actually I have it flipped around, this is our one way loading situation and this is our two way loading situation. And I've turned the scale up to exaggerate it a little bit, but we can see that it's following the tributary uh, width lines that we drew on the whiteboard. So on the one-way case here, we have half of the loads are on the middle and half the load is on either beam here. And we, we, we kind of figured that out where we drew a line halfway through here, we drew a line halfway through here so that half of the load, or 7.5 feet, of tributary width multiplied by 100 PSF gets us this 0.75 kit per feet. Same thing on this other side. And then the middle member here is taking 15 feet of tributary width or double of these two members. So we're seeing a double the, the distributed load or 1.5 kit per feet. Now if we move over to the two-way load we're seeing the fact that the girders are being loaded up here. So we're seeing this 0.75 feet is that break point. So if we measured 45 degrees from this point out here, 45 degrees from this point out here, it meets at 7.5 feet from this end and then same, uh, conversely the same on this end, it meets at 7.5 here. So that's why we're seeing a triangular distributed load here where at the peak is at 0.75 feet. And then if we kind of move our angle down here, we're seeing that this 0.75 feet peak mark is at each of the four exterior points here. And then since the middle member is taking two sides of that, it's seeing kind of an amplified version of that where if you take basically this trapezoidal load where it goes up to 0.75 feet across and then down to zero and multiply that by two, that is what this middle member is seeing. So as a last check, what we want to do now that we've kind of uh, just did a quick dive on how the loads are being distributed, we need to make sure that 
the sum of the loads in the y direction are actually the same in both cases because we see that the distribution is different but the total load uh, vertically should be the exact same. So if we click on one of the loads here using the SkySiv load uh, verification system here we're seeing that the area times the pressure is 90 kips and that our some of the equivalent distributed loads 90 kips and we have 0% variance that's good. We go to the two-way load we're seeing that same area, area multiplied by pressure and the same equivalent dead load summation. So the actual uh, sum of loads is the same. It's just obviously the differences in how the loads are distributed. So that's going to actually wrap up our demonstration here in Structure 3D. Hopefully, hopefully you found this video useful. Make sure to check out our software documentation for more useful information about SkySiv Structural 3D and other topics.